Welcome, I'm Mr. Balsiger. And I'm Mr. Stockman, and you are about to listen to another movie about meiosis and Krasnodar. Or another biology movie, but this one's about meiosis and Krasnodar. In your journal, uh, we would like you to do two things. One, we want you to complete a set of drawings for the stages of meiosis. And look, it's our old friend IP Matt. They go through the same stages, but they go through it twice. We also want you to answer two questions. Uh, the questions are addressed mostly at the end of this whole movie. First off, I want you to compare the differences of my, between mitosis and meiosis, and not just that the words are similar, but they are very different things. Uh, maybe a T-chart would be a good way to answer that. The second question is getting at why are siblings genetically different? Why are you and your brother, you and your sister, uh, not identical? So let's dive in to meiosis and where genetic variation stems from. So this diagram shows you a couple of things about the difference between, my between meiosis and mitosis. We'll start with mitosis, where you start with a, uh, a diploid cell and then zoom all the way down to the bottom and end up with two diploid cells at the end. Whereas meiosis, you start with a diploid cell, you uh, go through the first division, and you end up with two distinct haploid cells. And then in the end, you end up with four distinct haploid cells. So here's the first phase of meiosis, called so phase one. There's one term, piece of the term we wanted to point out to you called a tetrad. And in this cell, there are two tetrads. A tetrad is two homologous chromosomes, where the, each chromosome has already replicated once. And so if we count them, one, two, three, four. There we go. So there's four, uh, four chromatids. Four chromatids. And you could imagine in this picture if the blue was from the mom and the green was from the dad, you could pretend that there were the homologous pair of chromosomes. Each has already been replicated with a sister chromatid. So a tetrad, tetrad referring to four, the four pieces are the four uh, chromatids here, uh, two of which are sisters, and uh, together they make a homologous pair. That's rather confusing. <laughs> uh, during prophase one, there's two key things that happen. One is that the nuclear membrane, the membrane around the nucleus has to disappear, and that's represented by that dashed line. And the second is that notice that in each of these tetrads, you'll see that some of the legs of the chromosomes have crossed over. And that's going to be a really key piece as we move along through this movie. Here's crossing over, here's crossing over, and here's crossing over. The images for this, uh, for most of this video, come from the University of Illinois, Chicago. And there's, I'm just going to have that there. Okay. It's a link. Credit. Thanks, guys. So again, here's just another image from a textbook, McGraw Hill, about um, crossing over. We have the two, the two, uh, the homologous pairs on the left, and the legs have crossed over not once, not twice, but three times. And in the end, you see that we have four distinct chromosomes afterwards. We're going to go into much greater detail on this at the end of this movie. But just know that you start with a homologous pair. Remember, this is a tetrad. And your tetrads swap genetic information, kind of like if you were to hold hands, but then when you let go, you switched hands with your partner. And in the end, you ended up with four unique s separated sister chromatids. It's a way to increase the genetic variation. So interphase uh, and prophase are taken care of, of meiosis 1. Interphase was where the genetic information is copied and sister chromatids are made. 
then prophase was where the nuclear membranes started dissolving, and that's when crossing over occurred. Now we're in metaphase one, where just like metaphase and mitosis, the DNA, the chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell, and that's a great way to remember that it's metaphase. You can see they're lining up here. What's the difference, Mr. Stockman? Is that in mitosis, it was just uh, a, a, a single chromosome made up of two sister chromatids. Now we have two uh, chromosomes adjacent to one another, so that the, two, the homologous pair of the two chromosomes are next to the next to other. So in mitosis, the, each chromosome would be lined up on the middle and the sister chromatids would be split. But in this case, we're ready to pull apart the homologous pairs. So we're going to separate the matching pairs of chromosomes. If you want to pretend a homologous pair of chromosome, like you get a chromosome one from dad and a chromosome one from mom, you could pretend like they're shoes. Right now we're going to split the pairs of shoes, where that never happens in mitosis. When we do that, we end up with half as much genetic information. So metaphase one is where those homologous pairs line up. Anaphase one is where the homologs, the homologous pairs, are pulled apart. This is different than anaphase in mitosis because in mitosis, we split the, chrom the sister chromatids apart. Here, we're splitting the homologous pair. This is the phase where it becomes, uh, where it changes from a diploid organism, which is having pairs of chromosomes, to a haploid organism. Or cell, I should say. Cell. Not really an organism. I can't find my cursor. Oh, there it is. So here's Tula phase one, where just the, the two new cells uh, split apart, and we start. We have the formation of a new nuclear membrane around the chromosomes on one cell, and a new nuclear membrane around the chromosomes on the other. So now the cells are haploid. This is the formation of your gametes or your sex cells. Oh boy. So here's a time lapse. We just kind of let this catch up, but we're about halfway through. We're through the first. Uh, meiosis 1, and now after this, we're going to look at meiosis 2. So here's meiosis 1, there's chromosome forming, getting lined up metaphase, pulled apart, split apart. Meiosis 2. Ending in four cells. Diploid, 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 haploid, 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 haploid. Did I do that right? Yeah. That was going to start here. Meiosis 1, meiosis 2. Isn't that neat? Okay. okay, so now we're in meiosis 2. Again, we start back over with prophase 2. Uh, the nuclear membrane starts to dissolve again. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up, and this looks exactly like mitosis. Just like my mitosis, we have sister chromatids being ready to be separated by the spindle fibers for life. These sister chromatids will never be together again. Oh. Finally get ripped apart during anaphase 2 and pull the opposite sides of the cell. And you can see that the cell is also starting to pinch because now we're going to break into um, four cells here. That's it. We started with one. We're ending with four. And now because of crossing over, you can see that the chromosomes in each one is unique, that each of these gametes is unique. These chromosomes switched parts here. That means they've switched alleles. So that adds variation. These chromosomes switched to here too. So in the next steps, we're going to start looking closely, more closely at prophase one and this crossing over event. Here's a little animation. You can watch it over, over and over again if you wish. But we're going to focus on that one moment where they cross over. It starts here. here. Crossing over. That occurred during prophase one. Two more time. 
Replicating cystic chromatids. Cystic chromatids trade. Myosis 2. Four unique cells. One more time, then we're done. Crossing over. During prophase 1. So we've only seen crossing over really occurring once in those animations, but like in this little diagram you see it's crossed over two or three times. So what does this have, what's the effect of this? It's hard to read that when it's backwards. What effect does this have upon um, variation, the differences between you and, you and siblings? Well, if crossing over didn't occur, you can see these two homologous pairs sitting side by side. And once these get split apart after crossing over, the alleles, we would only have two possible outcomes without crossing over. Yet, if crossing over happens once, but if crossing over happens once, like so, then we'll see that after meiosis, that we have four possibilities. Four combinations, we're just double number combinations with only one crossing over of them. Now let's take this further. So with this one crossing over event, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four different types of gametes. Four gametes just from one crossing over event. So if you think about a human where there's so many more chromosomes, there's 23 tetrads per cell, but the number of combinations is, well, as you already saw, too many to count. So this is one reason that no two siblings look alike. For example, Paris Hilton and Nikki Hilton. Nikki Hilton. Or you wouldn't know your celebrities. I, I went on Wikipedia. Yeah. Or the Mannings. There's uh, Eli, Peyton, and I think that's the top of their dad's head, Archie Manning. Brothers, they look different. <laughs> okay, so here's a spot where you can start creating a uh, T-chart about the differences between meiosis and mitosis. Again, we see that same diagram. Think about haploid versus diploid. Mitosis is diploid the whole time. It has pairs of chromosomes, like left and right shoes. Meiosis is diploid in the beginning and ends haploid. So for mitosis, we start with one cell, the end with two genetically identical diploid cells. Um, it produces new somatic cells throughout the body, so all the other cells inside of you reproduce this way. Whereas meiosis, you start with one diploid cell, each with four non-identical haploid cells is what you end with. This produces your gametes in the sex organs. For humans, this would be sperm or egg. For plants, pollens or egg. Pollens? Pollen. 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 Thanks for tuning in. Ciao.